All right. So a uh, quick introduction. I think I might have met most of you, but if I haven't, my name is Corinne Balmain and I look after our Google practice and also the relationship between Frond um, and our good friends at Google. Uh, here in the room with me, I've got Jen, who's head of marketing. I've got Doug behind me, who's one of our principal consultants. Um, and we've also got um, Bella, Lynette, and also Ivan on the, on the line, who are also with Frond. Um, from a Google point of view, we've got quite a lot of you, actually. I didn't expect to see so many Googlers. So welcome and thank you all very much for your support. So um, we've got Ando, give a wave. Hello. Nat Tim. Joel Hi. and Miguel. I think that might be everyone that I've covered from a front and a Google point of view. Uh, so really our agenda today is just to have a quick chat about Frond and Google. Um, Nat is going to take us through Google Workspace. Uh, so we've already seen some questions come through. Thank you all very much to, to those who have already submitted them. Uh, and you're probably not surprised, but the common themes are what's changed or what are the features um, and a little bit around the SKUs so we can cover those as we go through. Um, I'll take you through the Google Workspace Health Check offering uh, that Front have and then we'll open it up for Q&A. Oh, I've already done the yeah. introductions. <laughs> Um, so, like I said, most of you are aware of this, but um, sometimes we actually forget from a Google and a Frond point of view. Uh, we've actually been in partnership for over 10 years. Uh, and we have, unfortunately, I'd love to say 100, we're three short, uh, but we have 97 joint Google customers. Uh, and, and collaboration really is embedded in everything that Frond and Google do together. And you can see that by the amount of, of people that we've got supporting us during this call. Um, and we are always working on, you know, digital uh, solutions and making sure that uh, we are jointly putting forward uh, any transformation activities that may be required for our customers uh, and helping us to get through innovation. And we really do partner together with you and our you know our customers to um, ensure that you know your success is our success as well so with that i'm going to hand it over to nat and nat's going to take us through some google workspace uh features uh once again if you are if you do have any questions throw them into the q a mm -hmm. i'll be monitoring them as well so i can um, bring those up at the end of the session thank you nat cool thanks corinne um I think I've met a lot of you that have um, actually joined the course. So it's so lovely to see everyone. I know it's been a while since some of um, us have caught up, but it's lovely to see everyone um, on the course. So thanks for taking the time. Um, today, I'm gonna to be taking you through some of our Google, new Google Workspace changes, former G Suite. So um, we, we no longer call Google Workspace G Suite, but essentially we have had a rebrand um, a rebrand and a relaunch. So I'll be taking you through some of some of that and what it looks like. Um, to kick off, really the new workspace is evolving. So the new workplace is actually becoming the new workspace. Um, so really what, what this change is all about is we have seen a tremendous amount of change um, during COVID and not just from COVID, but prior to that, we were seeing a lot of change around where people were working from and what type of work they were doing. So I think COVID really did sort of speed that up and it really did make sort of the new remote working the new normal. So employees are now wanting to sort of look at different ways that people can work, from what device can they work from. Um, they want to see that they can work from anywhere and at any time. Um, and that's really shifted us to make this sort of change into how do we make the existing workspace a little bit more productive, a little bit more efficient, and how do we support that remote working? So if we work remotely with the new Google Workspace, that is the new G Suite. So G Suite in the past, it really focused on four key areas. And these are the four key areas that Google Workspace focuses on as well. So being able to still connect with everyone, create via our editors, access um, the, the files that you need and find them where you need them, and then control using from an admin point of view. Um, this, the control is really around the device's data and permissions from a central admin console. Connect is still via our um, core apps being Gmail, Calendar, Currents, Meet and Chat. And as you can see, 
um, the biggest visual change has been through our icons. So we've started centralizing everything. We've made the colors a little bit more centralized with our own Google colors as well, whereas in the past it was very different. Um, and that's to really showcase the one Google approach that we're taking with this new Google workspace. So what does it actually mean? The new Google workspace, next slide please, Jen, is the new integrated workspace. So this new integrated workspace is really about bringing everything together. So if we have a look, um, what this slide is really talking about is currently we've actually got over 2 billion paying customers. So that's customers like yourselves that are paying for Google Workspace licenses. Um, from, from what we've actually done is we've taken some research. We're actually finding out that there are more, more and more information that we're managing. So we've got over 12,000 um, number of files that a typical user has. We're realizing that people are using more apps across the network. So um, we're finding that users are actually storing more apps, they're downloading more from our Play Store, et cetera. So we need to be a little bit more, um, we need to be able to connect that with our own Google Workspace platform. And then we also have more people working from more places. So that's not just in terms of remote working, but that's connecting from different devices as well. So being able to connect from a mobile device, connecting from a different machine, and just pretty much being always on. Um, I can relate to this, and I think a lot of you can probably relate to this, which is during COVID, everyone is always on. Before it was, okay, we stepped away from the office and we actually went home, we got on a train, we got into our cars and we drove home and there was actually a little bit of a separate. But now it's you wake up and the first thing you reach for is your phone. So, you know, opening up mail has to be seamless being able to connect via chat needs to be seamless. So we, we have taken a little bit of a shift from that and that's this whole new integrated workspace that we've created. So we started where most people start every day. And as I mentioned before, where do you, when you reach for your phone first thing in the morning, a lot of people will look at their mail first thing in the morning. So email really is the universal. It's, it, it's a platform device agnostic. It's not going anywhere, it's here to stay. But it's also here to um, assist with better record keeping, easy access um, and referencing. And it's a space and time to be thoughtful as well. So we are noticing that 86% of professionals are actually preferring to use email when they're communicating for business purposes. I've spoken to numerous customers and some customers are sort of like, oh yeah, I still use email. Um, I prefer to use email, but we're starting to move away from having a meeting all the time. You know, can that communication be better had over email as opposed to setting up a call and having five minutes on a call? Um, and we're still finding that a lot of people are still preferring to use email. And actually now it's more common to use chat as well. So what does that new integrated workspace look like? So as you can see um, from this image here, it really is to showcase mail, chat, rooms and meet all together in one in one platform. So if you open up your phone, um, you might have, you already start seeing this. I love it. And I was saying to Joel the other day, actually yesterday, um, how did we not have this? You know, like six months ago, we didn't have this. And we were swapping between apps, between mail, between chat, between rooms and meet. Like, how did we not have this together in one, in one single view? It just makes sense, right? Um, and that's the whole point of this whole Google workspace is to bring it together. So you can see here, um, not only is it easy to connect to a meet, but it's also easy to connect um, and link up to your chat. The nice thing about it is that we're bringing it together. Um, and this is the whole core element of being able to work together more efficiently. If we look at um, collaborating on projects, a big shift to this new integrated workspace was we found actually use cases where users were saying, we are collaborating constantly on projects with different teams. How do we make that more seamless? So if we're in a chat with a marketing team and we open up a file, can't we just have that file appear and share other supporting links and docs together? Um, so it's about keeping project members on the same page and actually being able to share that communication together. Next slide. Um, video meetings without switching apps. So this is what I was um, speaking about before. So we've heard from our users about how switching between apps actually is very distracting and it actually interrupts their flow. 
workspace and, and also their focus, right? So the integrated workspace was doing that more fluidly and being able to forward a chat message to your inbox or creating a task from a chat message. It's about connecting that whole thing together. Accessing third-party apps. Um, this is a really great one. If you can see from the bot here itself, we're actually um, being able to connect Salesforce bot um, in this instance to be able to integrate into your chat or being able to call a specific bot. We've got over like 200 bots that you can connect um, into this. So it's just being able to access that um, more seamlessly and having everything in one, one specific area. Being able to search across platforms and channels as well. So I love this feature and this was one um, user feedback that we actually really listened, listened to and actually developed, which was the ability to search more seamlessly and more easily. So being able to search just email or maybe just chat um, and from what specific person as well against what, are you looking for a PDF? Are you looking for an image? Um, just being able to do that more seamlessly. So that's something that's come out as well that you might have noticed. We're now going to move into a little bit about Google Chat. And I thought it would be um, really just important to call out two specific areas. And the first one being Google Chat and then the second one being Google Meet. Google Chat, we've come across some new features that have launched. And the reason we're calling out Google Chat today is because we have moved across from classic chat over to the new Google Chat. And this was a push as part of the new integrated workspace which is we are no longer using the classic Hangouts chat. Hangouts chat is now called Google chat. So some of the features that have come out um, are being able to search across messages and rooms, um, having one-on-one -on -one dedicated sort of being, being able to have that one-on-one -on -one dedicated Google workspace to have that chat, but also it's integrated drive. So really seamlessly, if you open up your chat, you'll be able to see that you can actually share a doc straight away. You can start a Google Meet straight away. Um, it's integrated with our scheduling as well. So you can call a bot and say, I'd like to schedule a call with Corinne. Um, at, and it will actually, if that person's sharing their calendar with you, it will showcase all the available slots between that person. And you can use that bot and say, okay, number A suits me. And it will schedule that. So it's just about all that, again, that simplicity and ease of access um, to use. So um, as I mentioned before, it is integrated with Google Meet. So the amount of times now that I, I start a call just by getting onto chat and saying, hey, do you want to get on a call? This is just eliminating the need to open up your calendar, schedule a call with that person and send an invite. It's just allowing for a meet code to be generated. And then that you and that other person on the receiving end can click directly within into that video meeting link. Integration with third parties. So as I mentioned before, being able to um, open up and, and put in separate different bots or per, for example, if you're using Concur, it can, it can call that um, and do that as well. My favorite one is the Giphy one. It's awesome. <laughs> um, and now we move into Google Meet. So Google Meet has had massive changes and I think COVID has sort of made that the launch of new features a little bit more rapid and we have been pushing out i know our google meet team have been pushing out um and driving to push more and more new features that are more user friendly but also um that makes sense especially for the environment that we're working in so being able to schedule a meeting so scheduling a meeting um as you can see it's it's actually been made a lot more seamless in the past we would have had to put in um, specific names into the meeting. We, have, we would have had to select specific rooms as well to be allocated to that meeting. But now with um, scheduling a meeting via calendar, if you plug that person's calendar into your search and you click on any slot, it will automatically put that person's name into the, into the meeting. So it's just, ma again, making it more seamless. But um, it, we've also allowed for the dial-in um, feature to, to come into place as well. So a lot of people are now dialing in from their phones if they're not um, remote, um, maybe picking up their kids, etc. So we're just making it a little bit more um, quicker and easier for them to gain access. Joining from different platforms as well. So um, if you are using Outlook um, or you're using a different type of platform, we're just making it more easy for you to join our Google Meet calls as well. Collaborating and screen sharing. Um, this is one that I've seen a lot of users and organizations say, hey, this is great because 
you know, they can share from their phone. So if they're joining from their phone and they want to present from their phone, they're now able to do that. They're also able to screen record as well. So um, recording from a meeting as well, but also sharing the meeting details um, with their guests. So one thing that I've learned is if you put an attachment into your calendar invite and you're in a call, you can actually open up that attachment directly from the call itself um, via the details um, tab at the bottom. So that's something that I've learned. And it's just, once again, making it more seamless for users. Live streaming, um, some of you may or may not be using this, depends on, on sort of the use case, but we are seeing more of this being utilized, particularly uh, with users working remotely from home and maybe physically in the past, you would have had a whole company all hands, everyone would have joined physically in the room, but this is being now being utilized for sort of sessions like all hands or large company announcements that previously in the past would have taken place in a physical setting. Live captions. This is a great one um, that we're developing upon. Um, so if you are sort of in a noisy environment or maybe you, you have um, a call where it's just difficult to sort of hear or you've got um, users maybe with um, disability, um, hearing disability impairments, um, you can turn live captions on and it's just easier for, for users to follow up along with as well. Some of the ones that we've actually come out with that have launched or is launching now are breakout rooms. So you would have seen this come across um, on the tab up the top potentially um, in that triangle square and circle tab. You can enable breakout rooms. Um, a lot of you, if you haven't seen this launch already, it is launching. So it, it might come across soon in your, in, in your own meetings. But breakout rooms is great as a way to utilize as maybe a, uh, a training function as well. So if you're training, if you're holding a, um, a training session over Google Meet and you want to break people out into different rooms, it's great for that. Um, this was a very highly sought after feature. Polling is the same thing. Um, being able to schedule a poll or even launch a poll during a meeting I find is great for engagement and just keeping the audience sort of engaged. Great for team meetings if you need to just sort of gauge and get a sense of how your team are feeling. It's awesome for that. Q&A as well has launched. So being able to ask a question, um, I encourage you to use that feature today. Please go ahead and go in there and ask the question. You can upvote as well um, on those questions that people have asked. And from a hosting point of view, we can also go in there and mark questions as answered. The nice thing about the Q&A and the polling is that after you've finished a meeting, it actually takes that data and spits it out into a nice Google Sheet for you. So if you haven't answered all the questions or gotten around to answering all of them, you can go ahead and answer them after and, and then share them with the participants that were in the call, right? So that's that's a really nice one to have. Background Blur has launched as well. So this was a highly, again, highly requested feature. Um, and we've launched this so if you're in an unfamiliar environment or you've got kids around or just sort of sitting in a cafe and you don't maybe want to show the environment, it's um, a great feature to have. Background replace. So this is one that I don't understand why it's, and maybe you can sh you can share some insight with me as to why it's so important, like I've never really understood. Um, but it is one that we've launched as well. So you can go in there, add images and, and sort of change your background and just add a little bit more fun. Um, a use case I came across, which is really cool um, that a customer was sharing with me is, They've got several different business units within their organization and they like to have um, sort of four different backgrounds um, for people to choose from. And that, that background will represent the identity or the business unit that they're from. Um, Simon, I can see that you've gone in and that's awesome. You've gone in and show, uh, showcase that. But it's, it's really great, especially if you're from an external company and maybe you're jumping on an external call like today. Ando, myself, Joel and Miguel could have had just Google backgrounds and very easily you would have been like, oh, okay, those, those users are from Google. Um, so it's a great way to associate maybe to an identity. Um, so if we move on, it is once again secure. It's made to be helpful and it is really more than just meetings. It's about, when I say more than just meetings, it's um, what I mean by that is you can easily screen share. It's a great way for collaboration. It's more than 
just jumping on a call and having a conversation. You can record those meetings, share them afterwards. Um, great use case in our team is we record meetings for onboarding sessions and then we share them with new starters that join our team. So it really is more than just having a meet. Like you can do so much with it and not only that, it is secure and we are here to protect privacy as well. So I know that there were questions around that in the past, but I don't think that there's concern around that. And if you do have concerns, you know, we can have deeper sessions around how we are showcasing security from a Google Meet perspective. So what's next? We've still got more features coming, um, not just from a Google Meet perspective, um, from all from Gmail chat, but um, I thought I'd share some cool ones that are coming. So Meet attendance, a lot of use uh, organizations will say, hey, you know, I just want to know if we've got um, 100 people joining our meeting and they've actually said yes, but only 50 show up. Can I know who actually showed up? So this is a great one um, that we're launching soon. Um, the mocks are potentially going to change, but Essentially, you'll get a, a sheet that's um, that showcases who actually attended the call. Hand raising, uh, so being able to hand raise in a call without having to unmute is a nice way so it doesn't disrupt the moderator. So at the moment, I can see that um, Ando has actually raised his hand. And just from a hosting perspective, that doesn't disrupt me, right? Like I can see that he, he might have a question, but he's not coming off mute and maybe I could hear all the background noise um, and all of that as well. Um, a roadmap feature is collaborative brainstorming features. So being able to integrate and share a jam and open a jam directly from your, your meeting, um, meeting is a great way. And being able to just have users on the call automatically gain access to that jam board and start collaborating on that as well. So there are some new features that we've launched. Um, and I thought that they were just some cool ones in terms of particularly now with so many of your teams probably remote. These are ones that you can share with your managers. These are ones that you can share with your users and encourage them to start using it as well. Um, we're going to move into some pricing and just sort of, I think this is where maybe you, you're more interested in the different licensing tiers and the changes that we've actually made. So if we move to the licensing tiers, the biggest, biggest change from our Google Workspace rebrand uh, re is that we are removing the basic license. So in the past, we had basic business and enterprise. We have removed basic. However, however, if you are on an existing contract and you're on a commitment contract with us, so that means you're not on a flexible contract, Google will continue to honor that for the remaining duration of your contract up until the end of that term. So if you're on a three year ending in 2023, we will continue to honor that up until 2023. If you're on one that ends end of this year, we will continue to honor that as well. Moving forward, however, we will have only two tiers of licensing, um, being business and enterprise. And what we've done is with the business and enterprise, we've split them out and we've created sort of sub licenses, you can call them sub licensing tiers below each each one. So you can see here we've got under business, we've got business starter, business standard and business plus. Business starter has come in to replace your basic license and it's at the same cost as well with the same features we have added promotional features things such as hand raising q a breakout rooms um, and advanced endpoint management from a security standpoint business standard is the new business tier so same price again however the biggest change to that is that it is not unlimited storage so it is two terabytes of storage however it is pooled so um, the reason we've made this change is a lot of the time in the past we've offered unlimited storage but we were noticing that a lot of our a lot of the users weren't actually using unlimited and it was sort of capping or not even capping but not even two terabytes of storage was was utilized so we believe that two terabytes is more than enough and if of course if you've got more users that are over overreaching that um, it is pulled so you can leverage off other users. Um, we have also included other Google Meet and security features into that, but we've also allowed for um, breakout rooms. And the biggest, biggest change is we have included recording into this. So in the past, Google Business never came with meeting recordings and we found a lot of the time our business users were asking for it. So we have put it in to the new business standard. And then you've got Business Plus. 
Business Plus comes with everything in Business Starter Business Standard, um, but it also does come with the AI noise cancellation as part of Google Meet. I want to just caution one thing, which is Business Standard does not come with Vault. So in the past, our legacy Business Standard had, um, our legacy G Suite business had Vault. But in order to get Vault, you do need to look at the Business Plus tier. So that's just one thing that I'd, I'd like to point out. And if we move to the Enterprise tier, you can see that we've got Enterprise Standard and Enterprise Plus. The Enterprise Plus is the equivalent of our current Enterprise licensing, um, but it does come with an AppSheets Pro license. So this is something new that wasn't previously enabled, um, but it also does both actually come with additional support capabilities. So you, you can see that the Enterprise Standard has come out and it's got DLP in there, it's got Cloud Identity Premium um, and Advanced Enterprise Control. It is not as expensive, obviously, as the Enterprise Plus, but it's made for users that are currently potentially on business and for organizations that maybe want to make the step over to Enterprise, but don't require the full stack of Enterprise features. Enterprise Plus comes with the Security Center as well, um, and that's not something that's included in Enterprise um, standard. The, the other thing that I'd like to call out, as I mentioned earlier, is the support piece. In the past, support was always vanilla. It was a vanilla support that was provided. You would create a support case, it would go through our support channels, and then we would allocate that to an agent, and then you would hear back within 24 hours. The Enterprise Standard Enterprise Plus, we've actually launched what's called enhanced support. And that's 24 by 7 support over phone, email, and online. And we've got different SLAs against um, different types of cases. So if you've got a, P, um, a P1, for example, that for um, I think it's eight within eight hours um, that you'll get a response. But I'm happy to share in further detail the, the breakdown of that. On top of enhanced support, we've also got a premium support offering that you can purchase separately. Um, and if, for example, you're on a business license and you're and you, you're actually interested in enhanced support and gaining that extra level of support, you can purchase it as a separate support feature um, too. Cool. So before I pass it over to Corinne, um, that was a high level overview of some of the changes. I know everyone on the call comes from different organizations with different licensing constructs. Um, my advice is to reach out to your business um, your Google Workspace business specialist, so either myself or Miguel, um, and we can actually have a separate conversation with you in terms of what that change might look like for you and start talking about on a high level, okay, if we, what what does it look like from if we were to do something now and what and sort of pricing tiers, um, et cetera. So over to you, Corinne. Thanks, Zach. Uh, and before I um, kick into um, our health check, probably, you know, Nat's covered a lot of features that either are already available in Google Workspace or are on the roadmap to, to coming. Um, so what we'll do is when we send out the slides, what, we'll, what I'll also do is just include a link for those of you that aren't aware of the blog. Uh, so there's a Google Workspace blog and also a release calendar. And it actually shows you what's coming, what are the new features, and if there's any change management activities or considerations that you that you might want to think of so we'll make sure that we add that in there um, but um, the calendar just to let you know you can actually subscribe to the release calendar and actually have the overlapping in your google calendar uh, and it's a really good way to be able to visually see when things are getting released based on the type of uh, release schedule that your domain might be on so we'll include that as well all right so from a um, health check point of view is you know security is is paramount and as nat said before you know and there's lots of white papers etc that we can we can share with you um but but really is you know starting with your day with email that's actually where a lot of the phishing attacks also start um you know malware etc and, and attachments 66 percent um happen via these malicious emails um, and uh, data breaches, uh, you know, employees, sometimes we expect our employees to take on a little bit of security as well. Um, and this, this results in really, you know, up to 90% of data breaches can be caused by this. 
uh, and ransomware, um, 50% of organizations deal with these things. So, you know, security is, is always at the top of everyone's minds and it, and it should be because it's very, very important. Uh, but this is why we've got this health check um, that we've been developing for uh, Google Workspace domains. So really what we're doing is we focus on, uh, you know, the kind of the top six areas. So one is with regards to how do we work with you? How do we have a look in your domain to prevent, um, you know, spoofing, phishing and malware, which are those statistics that I covered? Um, how do we how do we prevent your accounts being compromised? And obviously, you know, when accounts get compromised, there is data that is, that is associated with those uh, accounts. So how do we also prevent that data loss? Uh, how do you manage your privileged access? So um, some people will have um, super admins, but you know, do you actually require that many super admin accounts? Have you got your service desk using the appropriate levels of access um, for your workspace domain? Um, also third party application access. So I'm not sure if you're aware, um, but a lot of people um, can uh, add extensions and then sometimes when you add an extension it'll say you know are you comfortable with me having access to the following and you click OK. What we do is we would work with you with regards to those third party applications and we would review those to determine which ones you probably might want to reconsider. Um, there's over 85 policies that we will go through and we will review and we also give you a really nice traffic light assessment. So the assessment will um, show these are low hanging fruit or these are immediate things that we need to action right now. Um, in fact, I know that there's some people on the call have actually already gone through the security health check with us, which is great. Uh, and then we will do a walkthrough of those results. And those results will be, um, these are your immediate action. These are things that you might want to consider. And actually, you know, these are nice to have, but they're also not crucial to, um, you know, creating that health check on the domain. So um, the reason is because sometimes, when was actually the last time that you reviewed your organization settings? Um, you know, the Google domain is, I want to call it click and forget, but also as Google um, releases these new features, sometimes they, these can also be new features that are actually in your admin console. So it really is, you know, these are questions that hopefully you're looking at and going, oh, actually, I wasn't, I don't know the last time that we reviewed our, our domain settings. Um, and also, you know, have you had some of your IT staff potentially move on and have they uh, trained someone else to, to come through and actually have a look at what that looks like? Um, and once again, uh, you know, Nat's just showing just a couple of the features, uh, but she um, did mention, you know, there was cloud identity piece sitting in there. So, you know, there's a number of security features in Google Workspace and really, you know, are you going to make the most of those? And, and as Nat mentioned, we can work with you on how we can help you um, enable some of those. So, you know, to summarize, you've already seen the, the features, but, you know, Google are always releasing new policies. These new policies can help secure your environment even further. Uh, I've mentioned and Nat mentioned before, security is Google and Fron's priority to our customers. Um, and then obviously, you know, we've got the insights into the Google Workspace Enterprise. So we, we can see what we've worked with other customers and make those recommendations on those specific settings, configurations and policies that you should enable. Um, so to, to kind of summarize everything that Nat and I have spoken uh, about today, it's really, you know, looking at, you know, your revenue growth, your employee um, efficiency, IT cost savings, and also risk mitigation. So we've got a couple of um, statistics up there. And once again, when we send this slides out, there's a number of links that you can follow. Uh, but, you know, a 1.5% increase um, in revenue, which is driven by Google Workspace, or I like to call it GWS, um, <laughs> 171 hours saved per user. So this is really around 21 days per user per year. Um, by looking at the health check, you know, you can also look to reduce the risk of your data breaches. Um, you 20% reduction of on-demand technical support. And then of course, uh, there's the ROI, uh, 331 ROI driven by workspace. So really it's, um, you know, 
if we work faster, if we work smarter and we work more collaboratively, then you're likely to get a very significant value impact by all of these components that we um, all look to have uh, within Google Workspace and, of course, the offering for the health check.